very American. But all right, let's go in. So this is from real life lore, uh, how this one picture explains all of history. And uh, when you look at the picture itself, it's like, so uh, like one half of the US being very bright when it comes to uh, city night lights. Uh, you got a lot of metropolitan areas here. You got Chicago being blocked by the sign. You got the New York megalopolis. You got Atlanta over here and a bunch of others. And over here, other than the coast, you know, talking about Oregon and California, uh, you don't really got a lot of stuff going on. So I wonder, maybe he's going to talk about that. I don't know. This video is made possible by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Watch another full-length companion video to this one in my ongoing modern oh. conflict series that explains the entire course of I the know Battle what of I'm gonna watch during the Syrian Civil War. After this which video, you can access by signing up for the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle deal for less than fifteen dollars a year at curiositystream.com. It's, it's a good deal. All right, war. I have to You've be honest. You've probably seen this a map a of the world before deal. that looks a lot like this. A map of the world's 195 mostly recognized countries. These maps show mostly? the arbitrary lines created by humans over the centuries that divide us. They show the boundaries of nations and the locations of cities. And over the past... I, I would love to do a, a test, you know, a world map test to see how many countries I could name. You know? Several decades, this map has rarely changed. The last time that it Sudan? formally did so was more than a decade ago in July of 2011, when South Sudan was born as the world's most recent country. Every political my map grandmother, my mother's side, before she passed. Date, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. She remember her ancestors from Africa changed. on a and boat a result, coming to the if USA. Only wow, kinds of maps that you've ever what been a story, at, man. You would have failed to what notice the true, enormous, and unprecedented rate of changes that have been taking place. That's all beautiful. I'm, I'm sorry for over the past uh, 10 you know, her years. Passing, but... And in order to see that change more clearly, you've got to switch to a different map showing our planet at night. This is the Black Marble, a beautiful map created by researchers at NASA using thousands of separate composite images that have all been combined into a single whole, taken from a satellite specifically designed to sense the world for man-made lights. Nothing tells us more about the spread of humanity across the planet this than is the so patterns cool, made though. by the glittering lights of our cities. And if you know where the right places are to look, this map can pretty much tell you all in just a single image, the entire history and story of mankind. Let's begin by looking at the real shapes and patterns of where people within countries live. Like here in Afghanistan, on a political map, Afghanistan has a very unique and complex looking shape. But viewed on the map of lights at night, the true and simpler pattern of where Afghanistan's people live is revealed. In reality, Afghanistan's 32 million people live largely in a gigantic ring, with a single circular highway connecting- Yeah, a ring pretty much uh, close to the borders of Afghanistan, you know, over here Pakistan. No, sorry, over here Pakistan, right here China a little bit, and I don't know what these borders are. I did the test. The only ones I could really name is countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Most of the countries, major yeah, the ones where your and population centers were from. all together. This is largely because in the center of this ring are some of mountains. the tallest mountains found anywhere on the planet, yep. with some of the peaks rising to as high as twenty-four thousand feet above sea level. The interior is. Ge geography can tell you a lot about a country. That's that's one hundred percent true. It's just too harsh of an environment for large. Not only geography, to be built but on, and thus the, that, the ring that around light them map is where most Afghans actually call home. Strangely, the most comparable pattern of civilization to Afghanistan's ring of people can be found across the world over the Atlantic on Iceland. Similar yeah. to Afghanistan, oh. the center of Iceland is full of I can't think of two very uh, m more different places than Afghanistan and Iceland. And harsh, cold, rugged terrain that isn't ideal for founding large-scale settlements on. Meanwhile, But that's true though, aren't there a lot of uh, volcanoes in I Iceland? Uh, a lot of, I don't know, fucking mountains and volcanoes and coast shit. has warmer temperatures and provides easier access to fishing and trade. And so, as a result, Iceland's 366,000 people live largely in a ring around the island. So yeah, pretty much the same thing. Uh, here's uh, Reykjavik, uh, which I'm guessing, you know, it's the largest dot, so I would imagine that's uh, the capital of Iceland. 
and then we just have a ring. Interior along the coast, and about half of them live in the bright, glowing dot of the capital city, Reykjavik. Let's now take a look at another fascinating population pattern by traveling across the world again to the South American continent and focusing yeah, here over central Argentina. My bros. During the daytime, you'd barely notice any signs of human settlements here at all, and might even think that you're looking at an abandoned part of the world. But flip the switch tonight, Lord. and the story looks very different indeed. Now, the countries with Stan should form the ultimate Stan Stan country. <laughs> I agree, though. That'd be cool. So, this is Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. One of these has to be Mendoza, which I actually have family members uh, living there of my uh, Jewish side of the family. Now, you'll notice rows and rows of nearly perfectly spaced dots of light that betray the presence of precisely planned and organized human settlements. These dots are each a town, and they appear roughly every 30 to 50 kilometers apart from each other because they're all found across railroads, and they all grew up as railway stations. It's very you interesting. You, can, you know, you can look, they're all going to Buenos Aires, you know, which is a pretty massive city. And they're all going there. The last time we saw them, the Americans pissed off my grandmother because they had a nice expensive car. And my grandmother was very competitive against his overseas siblings. Is that a reason to get angry? A nice expensive car? That sounds like a, you know, real nice thing, you. Speaking of countries, did you know Peru has the oldest living civilization in the world? I think, right? It's north of Chico. Contrast the map of the area Nordic at Chico. night with this map of the Argentinian railroad network from the beginning of the 20th century. You can see how this pattern viewed from space the United became Provinces the way of that it is Rio today. de la Plata. Over in Russia, a similar pattern can be viewed by the continuous chain of lights spanning oh, from Moscow across thousands of kilometers to the east through Asia. These sparkling lights of Russian civilization across Eurasia trace the Trans-Siberian Railway, the longest railway line in the world that connects Moscow in the west with Vladivostok in the east, over a distance of more than 9,000 kilometers. And in between Ooh. the two cities, Ooh, the boy. vast railway system connects hundreds of Russian towns across Eurasia that are Damn. easily spotted in the darkness. The initial railway was constructed and finished during the Tsarist times in 1916, and has been almost continuously expanded upon from there ever since. Today, the rails extend Russia's from Russia's massive. I mean, you gotta connect Russia, and again, they're all connecting to Moscow. Russia into Mongolia, China, and North Korea, and later on this century, there are even plans to connect Tokyo and Japan to the network via a series of bridges from Honshu to Hokkaido, from Hokkaido to Sakhalin, and from Sakhalin. That's a massive project, and that'd be pretty cool if that could happen, but I don't know. He's got kinder, kinder as he aged. Also, Mexico has one of the oldest pyramids in the world. Some say their pyramids are even older than Egypt. I have heard that, but I honestly, I don't know the timeline. To, to be honest. One of the most fascinating areas of the world to focus over at night Australia. is Australia. Of course, the lights of Australian like civilization that. are small for such a massive area of land. It's also like a ring. almost entirely to the more habitable and easier to live on East Coast. The city of Perth, seen right here in the West, is the most isolated major city of over 2 million people anywhere in the world. And it's so much easier Ooh. to see how how that's the case on this map. The nearest other significant city with a population of more than 100,000 people is Adelaide over here, and that's 2,100 kilometers away. The 70% of Australia in between the lights of cities is covered Damn. by the outback desert. Vast the and outback. inhospitable and nearly empty of people, save for this small- Do y'all watch Survivor? Uh, one of the early seasons was filmed in the outback. Southern Siberia is actually pretty fertile. Small speck of light directly in the continent's center. This is the town of Alice Springs, population of 26,000 people. And directly next to Alice Springs is Pine Gap, a joint United States-Australian intelligence base that is run by the CIA and the NSA with more than 800 Yo, employees. Yo, don't the tell me. Why the CIA don't tell me that's interesting or a little creepy, you know? The CIA manages a base in the middle of Australia. CIA and the NSA have a base in the middle of the Australian outback is because of its prime. Oh, what happened? This video was made possible by Curiosity across railroads, easier to live on East Coast, the town of Alice Springs, population of 26,000 people, and directly next to Alice Springs by the because I don't of know its what prime happened. geographic significance. 
The base here controls and operates American spy satellites as they pass over this third of the globe, including China, North Korea, the Asian part of Russia, and the Middle East. Theoretically, the base that controls all of them could have been placed anywhere here, but the dead center of the Australian continent was chosen as the singular best location for it because it's, perfect it's thousands for a base. of kilometers away from the ocean in every direction. In the middle it's thousands of kilometers away in the ocean, and then it's thousands of kilometers away from all the other Australian cities. Countries like Australia are is it really designed... I don't know, something about them throws me off. Well, Australia is weird, inside man. Inside of a very friendly country, and as a result, the location is simply far too remote and inland for enemy ships passing in international waters nearby to intercept it's any of the signals. And thus, that's why you have a lone, isolated dot of light in the middle of a sea You made of it into the big lakes if you have the CIA in the your United country. The United States itself has a very interesting population pattern as well. Ooh, come on. By the well, here, here's Mexico. He's probably not going to mention it, but let's let's look at let's look at Mexico. We have Mexico City right here and the entirety of the Mexico City megalopolis, if you could call it. Uh, so I live around this area, my friends, and I think this is Guadalajara. This is Monterrey, I think, right here. And TJ, Cancun, that's it. There's an ancient burial mound in western in England. In this case, the absence of lights. You'll the notice that America the Anglo Saxons showed up. Of roughly equal size. It was a smiting east, forge built by giants. Of bright wow. lights, and the west, an archipelago of bright That's islands very interesting. scattered across a sea of darkness. And the line that separates the two sides flows almost perfectly straight. Yeah, this is Denver, I think. Uh, this must be Salt Lake City in Utah. This has to be Las Vegas, Phoenix. Just to the west of San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Omaha, Sioux Falls, and Fargo. This Shit, it's very, it's very interesting how they perfectly line up. You got the three massive cities in Texas, Oklahoma City, all the others that he mentioned. Largely follows the 100th meridian line of longitude. United and it's Mexican still States. Largely marks to this day in the 21st century. <laughs> UMS, the UMS, of the UMS. Western frontier, with few large settlements scattered to the west beyond it. The reason for why this pattern continues to exist the weather. is because the 100th meridian roughly marks the geographic boundary between the wetter and more humid climate found in the east and the drier, more arid climate of the west. Moist air coming in from the Gulf of Mexico rarely travels any further to the west than this line. While at the same time, the gigantic Rocky Mountains chain casts a vast rain shadow across the landscape that prevents additional moisture from blowing in from the Pacific. And so, as a result, the agriculture in the west has always been forced to rely much more heavily upon irrigation technologies and has always been less efficient than the farms in the east, corn. which means less food and There's less a lot people of corn, over right? the centuries of development. Geography often dictates where people end up settling down. Yeah, this is a pretty famous map, the one of the Nile in Egypt and how most of the people live here. As in Egypt, here at night, you can easily trace the course of the Nile River through the country as the brilliant lights of Egyptian civilization trace its outline. Around 97 million people live within just a few kilometers of the Nile banks Whoa. inside of Egypt. 97 it's one of the most million, densely populated dude. regions in the world and causing the entire river to be easily visible from space at night. A very similar pattern of lights can also be observed far away in Pakistan along the, the Indus, Indus River. Yeah, the Indus just River. Like the Nile, the Indus True. I wonder how many people actually know Mexico's actual name is United Mexican States. Uh, I, in Mexico, of course, everyone knows, but outside Mexico, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people know. ...has been a center of civilization for thousands of years. I think other countries have that name for, like, Colombia. I think uh, Colombia, it's also the United States of Colombia or something like that. ...as people have farmed and tilled the river's rich and fertile floodplains. In spite of the... The Indus River, massively important when it comes to history, the, the history of... Region. Now, the Indus in the River Valley century, civilization. The bright lights of Pakistan's modern cities make it easy Karachi, to trace the river's course from space. And Islamabad, many of the country's biggest which cities must are be clustered this. across it. While the Indus is an example of a clear geographic feature that humans have adapted around, this wavy line of lights directly nearby to the east is the exact opposite. This is actually the international border that divides Pakistan from in India, India. An yeah. arbitrary line that was created by the British. Yo, it's, it's fucking interesting. You can actually see the border. And of course, you know, uh, Pakistan and India have a lot of trouble. And it's probably because the border is uh, has a lot of 
uh, military troops, uh, military bases, equipment. There's a lot of things there. So, you know, there's light. My Mexican friend here didn't even know Mexico had states. No, <laughs> I did knew. Honestly, me neither. I thought, I thought they had a pro they had provinces. There's a lot of underground water in that area as well. It's called the Ogala Aquifer, I think. Divided the two making countries the US and granted them both independence more than 70 years ago. Without any mountains or rivers to mark the border during the day, back then, this line only existed on papers, on maps, and within mines. But now, in the 21st century, it can be clearly seen from space and is very real. Because India and Pakistan are bitter geopolitical rivals who have fought four wars against each other in the past few decades, India, citing security reasons, opted to install thousands of kilometers of floodlights across the entire length of the border to keep it all well illuminated at night, which makes it perhaps the easiest and the most obvious artificial man-made creation to spot from space. Meanwhile, within India, it's really the change in lights over time that have been the most fascinating. Back in the year 2000, only about about 60% of the Indian population had any access to electricity. By 2012, wow. that number had increased to about 80%, but that still meant that 20% of India, or about 20% of over a billion people, that's insane. 253 million people still don't have, have no access, access to, to electricity. electricity. As That's a result, insane. the nighttime map of India at the time looked a lot like this. But 2014 saw the election of Prime Minister Modi. Narendra Modi, who ran on a campaign promise of bringing electricity to every village in India. Thus, by 2016, when NASA created the latest edition of the Black Marble photo, the lights across the country increased the latest edition. Whew, look at that. I think the difference is particularly large. In, in, I think this is Delhi. This has to be Mumbai. And I, I don't know the name of the other cities. The look Black at that. Marble look at that. Photo, the lights across Oof, the country. This region saw a massive boom. Photo, look at this. The lights across the country Oof. increased dramatically. I mean, good, to look like good for them. This. As more than 125 million Indians gained electricity for the very first time. Wow. And all in a span of only four wow. short years years. This became one of the greatest achievements ever made in the entire history of energy. And now in 2022, with nearly 100% of the population having access to electricity, India is among the brightest countries seen anywhere on the planet's surface. Immediately next door, China, China with her population of I more than 1.4 billion people, is also one of the brightest. Of course, we can see the the divide between uh, eastern and western China. countries in the world. But the change in lights across China over the same time period tells a very different story than the one in India. If Yo, it's also really fucking interesting, and I think probably he's gonna talk about this North and South Korea look at the map of lights from 2012 and then fast forward to 2016 you'll notice nearly everywhere a dimming of lights across the countryside and the intensification of brightness coming from the cities for decades now all across the world people nearly everywhere have been moving from the countryside into the cities for better access to jobs markets education and healthcare. but nowhere on the planet has this general trend been more acute than in china where just since 1975 nearly half of the entire population Around 715 million people have abandoned the Chinese countryside for the cities. Back in 1975, China was still overwhelmingly a rural and agrarian society with only 17.4% of the population residing within urban cities. But then, in the late 70s and the early 80s, the Chinese government began doing things differently. They created what they called special economic zones, and at first 18 cities along the coast, where the taxes were less and where there was less state oversight from the centralized communist government. Oh, well, I didn't miss much, attracted a lot but I had to get my water to set up their operations. And with the plentiful new jobs they provided came in workers from the countryside. The very first of these zones was the town of Shenzhen, which at the time in 1980 was... A Northern India is more densely populated, but the south is more urban and already developed... Uh, but not as populated. So right now, Northern India is growing the town most. Of only All right, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Today, only a little more than 40 years later, Shenzhen has exploded into a global tech hub metropolis of more than 13 million. 
Oh now, God. in 2022, China boasts more than 312 urban areas with populations of more than 500,000 people, most of which you've probably never even heard oh of. Oh, God. In comparison, the United States has only 96 of these large urban areas, meaning that there are today no vastly way. more urban Chinese people living in cities than what Americans, the which was not all the case back in 1975. The change in lights across China in the four years... Well, I mean, it would make a lot of sense that, you know, China has a lot of people, so I don't think why I'm, out, I'm that surprised by that. ...between 2012 and 2016 shows this greater historical right. trend Come on. very clearly. In just that short time frame, more than 81 million people, about the population of Germany, left the Chinese countryside and moved into the cities. Okay, the brightest that's... of all these areas and the brightest single spot Shenzhen. anywhere on the Earth's surface is right here. The Pearl River Delta, a conglomeration of close-by cities like Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Zhuhai, that if considered a single oh, urban... That's really fucking bright, dude. Look at this. It's extremely bright. And of course, you got Hong Kong and Shenzhen and Guangzhou, which I think it's also pretty fucking massive. So combining all of those, you got a... Uh, okay, I want to hear how many people. The metropolitan area would be the largest anywhere in the world with a population of about 70 million people. In other words, half of the population of Russia all living together in a single, small, intensely wow. bright metropolis. Ooh, oh man. Ever since the year 1879 insane, when the light bulb dude. was first patented by Thomas Edison, the globe has been growing brighter and brighter with every passing year from space as more and more Imagine the traffic. Oh god, the traffic. What a nightmare, my guy. What a nightmare. Of humanity has come online and gained access to electricity. I think Wangsu is more, more than populated than Shenzhen. Percent of humanity has electricity. Maybe the I honestly have no idea. That's ever been known. But at the same time, more than 759 million people worldwide still do not have any access to it. And more than 90% of those people live inside of one of the darkest Africa. regions seen anywhere on the planet still here, Sub-Saharan Africa. There are some areas of intense brightness here, South Africa. Sure, like in the major cities like Lagos, Nairobi, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. But by and large, Sub-Saharan Africa appears far darker than it should be. Not because it's empty, but because there are still 683 million people who live here without any access to electricity. The country of Burundi has the lowest overall percentage of people who have access to electricity anywhere in wow. the world, at only 11% of the population. Meanwhile, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or DRC, is the country- This is- look at how- such a massive country. And it's it's dark. There's some few spots here, but it's with the highest overall number of people still remaining without electricity. Seventy two and a half million oh more God. than the population of France. These millions of people still use solid fuels like wood for heating and for light. And as a result, their presence is invisible to the light seeking satellites of NASA and the areas they inhabit appear empty and thus the drc in particular and sub-saharan africa in general is the it's, it's hard to think that even though those spots l might look empty to us like there's people living here with no electricity this area in the inhabited it's fucking world, sad still remaining that, it is from the perspective of space appears largely as it has for the past several millions of years because this would lead you to believe these places are inhabited but africa has over a billion people one what, like what 1.4 billion people and you would think there's but just barely like any the people. absence of lights doesn't necessarily mean the absence of people. The presence of lights doesn't necessarily indicate their presence, the presence either. Of people. The North Sea is a large body of water around Europe, and as you're probably aware, oceans generally don't, don't tend have to people. have a lot of yeah. people. But when you focus over the sea at night, you'll notice dozens of oh light. shit. Actually, it has a mega city called. Kinshasa, in the western part of the country, it has uh, about 15 million people, but it's kind of hard to see, damn. 15 million people, and you couldn't see a very large spot of light. Imagine that. I'm guessing these are all, all uh, oil platforms. It's sprinkled across the surface. Rather than representing human settlements, these lights betray the presence of the roughly oil. 170 on. offshore oil and gas rigs that are operated in the sea by Norway, the UK, and the Netherlands. Oil and gas wells emit a lot of light because as they drill, they flare gas. 
When you have a lot of gas flaring going on in a concentrated area, that's going to be a lot of light revealed a night from the sky. And using this as a guide, you can clearly see where the world's most important sources of oil and gas can be found. The Gulf, Besides Arab the countries. The sea, you can see lights in the eastern Mediterranean off the coasts of Egypt and Israel, representing the offshore gas rigs that are operated by both countries. You can see an extensive chain of lights across the Caspian Sea, flowing out from the capital city of Azerbaijan, Baku, where the very first offshore oil platforms in the world were originally constructed and of course the, the area yeah. around the persian Gulf yeah. appears bright oh, enough shit. to almost be its own galaxy holy to the fuck wood look at some of this are massive dude if if the land didn't show up you would think this is just land god damn oil and gas fields dubai is Iran. also pretty bright Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. The waters of the Persian Gulf itself are spectacular. It's also really interesting, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but some of the roads here in the UAE uh, are, have light. Like, you can see very clearly the roads, and I wonder why that is. Uh, maybe it's like some sort of infrastructure thing, uh, so like drivers don't get lost in the desert. Maybe I don't know, but I, it's interesting. I hope it talks about lit up with more than 145 offshore rigs, including the ones around God, here. Damn. The North Field split between Qatar, and, and I Europe. think you can also see the difference because the light of the oil uh, platforms is different from the light in the cities. And for example, here in which I think this is Kuwait. Uh, you can see a lot of light that's sort of uh, very bright, but different from the light in the cities. Ron, which is by far the single largest natural gas field ever discovered anywhere on the planet. Yeah, it's lights tell insane. stories everywhere you see them, but the absence of lights can tell just as strong of a tale. For another notable area, we have to travel back across Asia to the Korean the Peninsula, Koreas. where the difference in lights between north and south is as great as the difference between night and day itself. Save for the capital of Pyongyang, North Korea is almost entirely dark, despite having a population of nearly 26 million people. The border in the north with China can be clear. Gosh, man, you gotta feel bad for the people of North Korea, man. Like, they are struggling hard. Oil rig light is a lot more diffusive. Exactly, it's a lot more diffused than the light in the cities. Clearly seen by the zigzagged patterns of bright Chinese cities over on the other side of it. At the very same time, the southern wow. border with South Korea can be clearly seen. Wow, up in its wow, what a difference. Look at, I mean, South Korea, it's pretty much very well lit. And the massive city of Seoul compared to like that complete darkness. You can also see the border here, you know, you can very clearly see the demilitarized zone. North Korea is actually very densely populated, really. I guess a lot of people live in close to the capital, maybe. Piety from space as well. This is the most heavily militarized border anywhere in the entire world that artificially cuts the Korean Peninsula in half. And yeah, exactly. You can the see the border. Regime in the south from the totalitarian regime in the north, guarded by millions of soldiers and landmines on either <laughs> side. As a result, the entire border is basically a gigantic fortress that is completely covered by floodlights at night, cementing the old arbitrary ceasefire line that ended the Korean War back in 1953 as a permanent and clearly visible. Hi, I am from Kuwait. Finally, someone noticed us. For sure, man. I fucking love Kuwait. North and South Korea is like Venezuela and Colombia. Probably that's kind of true, yeah. Man -made feature Most of them are the rural people without electricity. Night, as if it were instead a That's major sad. natural geographic feature. And right across that border to the south is Seoul, the largest and brightest city in South Korea with more than 25 million inhabitants. Also, what, what is this light that it looks like the ocean, but there's this very interesting light. I don't know what, why, what that is. Look at the North Korean army dance moves for sure. We can, Almost we can take a look at that. Almost as many people as live in the entirety of North Korea combined. South Korea's tremendously bright lights are indicative of the modern, developed, and prosperous nation that is the world's eighth largest consumer of electricity. Meanwhile, the darkness of North Korea is indicative of the inefficient, totalitarian, fascist state that only has Fishing an electricity boats, uh, rate of 48.5% of their population. 
meaning that more than 13 million North Koreans continue having no access to power. North and South Korea's man-made political shapes are therefore both clearly visible from space. And this view puts into perspective the more practical reality that South Korea is effectively, despite being connected by land to the rest of Asia, an island surrounded by darkness on all four sides as every other island in the world Ooh. is. But the most startling change in light seen anywhere in the world over the past few years has been back over on the other side of Asia, within the Middle East. In the past decade, three countries in the Middle East have undergone devastating civil wars that have claimed the lives of hundreds of Yemen, thousands of people. Yemen, Iraq, Yemen, and Syria. Iraq, and Syria. And in the time between 2012 and 2016, when the two... I think uh, North Korean military is freaking huge, even on uh, par with China. Yeah, they have a lot of people. It's in, it's one of the largest for sure when it comes to people. Black marble photos were compiled. Much has changed. In Yemen, the lights have gone out across conflict zones since the civil war began in 2014. Oh, and man. after nearly 400,000 deaths. In Iraq, ISIS has been long since defeated. But from 2012 to 2016, you can clearly see the lights fading to darkness in all of the areas that they captured and occupied. And then, worst of all, there are the effects of war that can be clearly seen from space above Syria. As the civil war in the country intensified and the catastrophic destruction began growing greater, as much as oh 80%... Oh my... God. According to what I can find, it's noticed as fishing vessels. What the f fuck? ...of war that can be clearly seen from space above Syria. What the actual fuck? First of all, there are the effects of war that can be clearly seen from space above Syria. As the civil Oh my god. Look at that. There's a path of lights right here. This to this path goes 100% dark. It goes completely there are the dark. Of war that can be look, clearly seen look at this. Space above Syria. As the oh my god. That has to be at least hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Gosh, uh, it, it, it's it's really sad. Damn, it, it's bad, right? I would recommend looking at uh, North Korea. You dropped a bomb on me. Funny video. Heads up, uh, it has music in it, so potential copyright for sure. We can look at that. It's more than a million people, North Korean army. The catastrophic down. destruction began growing greater as much as 80% of the lights in the country went out wow. in just the four years between 2012 and 2016. The That's most... devastating. Imagine millions of people who live in Syria just losing their light, their electricity. It, it's, it's, it's devastating. It's really sad to, to see. Significant changes of all came around the city of Aleppo, the largest city in yeah, look at that. Look at all the light, all the dots. And I was so surprised by that that path of light. These two regions were... ...side of Syria and one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. As the four years between 2012 and 2016 went by, the lights across the city went They out. went off. And that tells us a very, very grim story. For in those four years, one of the most important, devastating, brutal, and catastrophic battles of the entire... You know, let's be careful with this uh, clips, but gosh, it's it's horrible and it's sad. You know, we're talking about people that I can't imagine living through something like this. You know, Mexico is it, it's dangerous and it's true. People here face a lot of problems, uh, but nothing like this. I don't think we can really imagine what it's like to live something like this. Sats, and it's actually a very fertile river that was amongst the most densely populated places in the world during ancient... It's true. I mean, it's the ho Syria is the home to uh, uh, early civilization. I mean, it's it's really important place when it comes to history. I can't even recall why Syria was in civil war at this point. It feels like it's been going for so long. Aleppo was one of the most popular cities on Earth, but during the civil war, uh, it fell behind Damascus. Um... Uh, it would be hella weird uh, when North and South Korea really do unite as a country. Yeah, I do. I, I think there's a lot of people that think they are not going to reunite precisely for that. I mean, imagine reunited one of the wealthiest countries on Earth and one of the poorest countries on Earth. That must be a, an incredibly difficult task. 
Imagine all the kids who had to grow up during uh, uh, a now nearly 11-year-long war who are adults now. True. I mean, just your childhood is now... Uh, it, it, it's it's war. That's all you can remember from your, for your country. And gosh, you just got to feel really bad. It, it, it sucks. It's one of the worst conflicts uh, in on Earth. I don't even know exactly what led to the Syrian war. But it, it just have to it has to be 21st you know. century was under sea. Both sides attack on airstrikes. I'm gonna be very careful with the clips, but uh yeah, he's gonna be promoting his uh, nebula uh series. Oop. Yeah. Gosh, well that was that 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 was horrible. We ended on a really sad note and man, it just really sucks, man. I saw that this guy, uh, what is it? I'm sure we have it right here. He just uploaded a video about the invasion of Ukraine. I want to hear his takes. There's been times in Korea's past where North and South have been split for centuries. True, that's, I don't think, yeah. Here's my take on like North and South Korea. I personally don't think they are going to unite. Uh, not only because, like you said, there, there there have been times in the past where the Koreas have been split. So it's not like a re new thing. Uh, but it's just uh, the culture is so different. Like imagine all the propaganda that people in North Korea have been fed on for so long, now, for years, decades, many, many decades, what, 60, 70 years? Uh, imagine what would the shock would be, you know, if they united to to uh, with South Korea just be pretty fucking insane uh there, there's also the economic argument right South Korea is one of the wealthiest countries in the world and North Korea uh, is very poor you know how could you do that logistically I don't know yeah uh, North was actually doing better for most of that time makes sense 